Well, it happened. Splash Mountain is closed for good, and we are now up against the arduous task of awaiting its return as Tiana's Bayou Adventure. In this video, I would like to take a look at Disney's track record thus far when it comes to the total revamp or reimagining of an attraction. I'm going to go over some of the attractions that have been reimagined in recent years, some good and some just alright. My hopes are to get a feel for what we can expect when this attraction returns in 2024. Before we get started though, I would like to share that even though we're super excited for the new attraction, Splash Mountain will always hold a special place in our hearts. I wish Disney were able to come up with a totally new ride for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, as a mountain in the heart of the bayou just seems out of place. Maybe something like Living with the Land and Frozen at Epcot respectively. I always thought Pocahontas would be a much better fit especially in Critter Country. But I digress. Let's get on to the video. First up is a recreation that I was definitely sad to see go, especially since it sat unused for almost a decade. That is Submarine Voyage, which closed in 1998 as part of the Tomorrowland overhaul, but didn't reopen until 2007 as Finding Nemo's Submarine Voyage. This ride had a ton of nostalgia as it was unique in that it went underwater with guests. Quite an amazing feat I always thought, even as my young self. Now with its replacement, much of the original remains intact, although the overuse of new technology definitely overshadows such an amazing original creation. This is an attraction that I usually skip, not that I don't like Nemo, but because the mystique of the original is all but diminished. That makes this my least favorite reimagining on the list. Next is an attraction I don't think I ever rode as it was mostly a ride aimed towards children. That is Flix Flyers which opened in 2002 and operated until its closure to make room for Avengers Campus in 2018. From what I remember this was a great ride for kids in the otherwise slowly declining land of bugs. But the reason it is on this list is because that very ride mechanism was repurposed for the use in the most recent addition to Pixar Pier, Inside Out, Emotional Whirlwind. Opened in 2019, this attraction is a cute and subtle ride that finally used up prime real estate where the Malaboomer used to reside. I think this is a great upcycle of an old ride that fits in very well with its Pixar-esque confines. A good movie to boot. Next up is probably the most odd original attraction, and that is Superstar Limo. I know it's been gone for quite a while, as this is what you know as Monsters Inc. Mike and Sully to the rescue today. I feel like I had only been on this a few times in the beginning, and for good reason. I will give that the overall idea fit much better in the Hollywood backlot than Monsters Inc. does, but aside from that, this is a ride much better served by its predecessor. This is fun for the whole family based on an intellectual property that everyone loves. I can also say that this might have been one of Disney's first iterations of the recent IP-based attraction overhaul craze. Even though some will say it's a bit of a budget reimagining, I think it works well and I'm glad this exists today. Would I like to see some upgrades in the future? Absolutely. But until then, it serves its very well-deserved purpose. Then we have Incredicoaster, formerly known as California Screamin'. I initially wasn't fully on board with this one as I just couldn't imagine how much you could do to a boardwalk style Woody to make it better than it already is. Surely I was wrong, because even with the extended scream tunnels to obviously make room for the larger show scenes, this adaptation of The Incredibles to an already decent Disney coaster really did make it that much better. There is much more to see with every ride, and it's more enjoyable with this total revamp. Props to Disney Imagineers for being able to pull this one off. And finally, we have an attraction that I absolutely had the most thoughts on when it was announced. How could you? How could this be any better? What are they doing to our beloved tower? An attraction I, along with many of the Disney Parks fan base, couldn't even fathom would be remotely close to the chopping block. Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror. This original attraction was one of the best. I remember the thought of pulling riders down beyond the speed of gravity sounded insane. 
Every bit of tower was created and imagineered into something truly amazing. It was such a great balance of an eerie, haunting feeling mixed with thrill. Tower of Terror was given the most special of send-offs though when they have their late checkout lead up to the final closing on January 2nd, 2017, by offering riders a once in a lifetime chance to ride in complete darkness. Definitely fitting and it helped soften the blow. So when Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout took its place, I had my reservations, but boy were we wrong. This attraction has now morphed into a much more fun and exciting incarnation than I thought was even possible. With the new theme, it may even be more appealing to the younger ones unsure and uneasy about this type of thrill ride. This ride is a prime example of how attractions can evolve as Walt said it best, Disneyland will never be finished. Albeit hard to swallow initially, this is a reimagining that Beck and I love and are here to embrace it. And if you need to feel the sweet drop of Tower of Terror, there's always the OG over in Disney World, for now. And now, that brings me to Splash Mountain, which will soon become Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So do you think this will succeed or will it fail? Well if you ask me, judging by Disney's track record, this should be a smashing success provided they don't cut any corners. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I think it will bring some liveliness to an otherwise kinda dark area of the park. Not to mention the disrepair Splash had been in in recent years. Sad to see it go, but hopeful for the future, and if they can tell the story in an immersive and fun way, then I think it will be a welcome addition to that corner of the park. Now before I close this one out, I did want to throw in an honorable mention. And this may not even count as it is technically only reimagined for a third of the year, Haunted Mansion Holiday. What can I say? We love ourselves some Nightmare Before Christmas, so this one, in my eyes, is nearly flawless. It comes around every year and returns to its former glory without skipping a beat. It's the best of both worlds and a unique experience as it has only stuck around here on the west coast. Some may think it hangs around too long, but how else can you tell the tale of when two holidays collide? As we await the return of an iconic attraction, albeit in a much different form, let me know your thoughts below. Are you excited for Tiana's Bayou Adventure? What are your favorite reimaginings? Do you have any you wish would have just stayed original? Did I miss any that you miss dearly? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you found some value in this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And while you're at it, subscribe so you won't miss out on any of our future adventures. But anyway, that does it for this one. So farewell, my friends. We will see you the next time we go somewhere beyond.